In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The psalm for this Palm Sunday is from Psalm chapter 116. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplications. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bounds. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. The reading for today is from Philippians chapter 2. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, through, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Word of God, word of life. rise as you're able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John. Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. 
The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him, and during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Dearly beloved, grace and peace to you from the one who has come among us, Jesus Christ. Amen. I love a good parade, don't you? Most years on Thanksgiving Day, we used to plant ourselves in front of the tube to watch Macy's. Now I can watch it from the kitchen while I'm fixing Thanksgiving dinner. I can see the TV across the room, you know. I love those Macy's parades, but I love small town parades even more. I remember sitting in my front yard in Hannaford, North Dakota, population 200, for North Dakota's centennial celebration. Hannaford is about five blocks long, but that day, there was a high school marching band, there was a jug band on a flatbed, clowns were riding little bicycles around and throwing candy, there were antique cars, many, and this gigantic red bell telephone, like the kind that used to be on people's desks, only it was this bright, shiny red thing that somebody was driving. And uh, neighbors came over to our house with their lawn chairs, and they were drinking beer and Coke. It's great to watch Macy's, but even better to just go out your front door and have a parade go by. I just love a parade. But crazy things happen in parades. When I was in high school, we had a band instructor who believed in marching in every parade he could find. And there was always a parade somewhere on the 4th of July, and it was July in Minnesota, and our heavy, itchy wool uniforms were designed also for Minnesota, but in October for football games, not 4th of July parades, never mind, we had to wear the stupid things. And we just about died in those uniforms. Every summer, marching, it was always at least 90 degrees, and there were neighboring parades for all, any kind of excuse you can think of. None of us actually knew where we were going in those parades. We just trudged ahead and played occasionally. And I think the, the adults pretty much must have just trudged ahead and did whatever they were supposed to do too. Well, one hot July, 4th of July parade, our parade took a turn for the worse. There was a group of clowns wearing these funny little hats and riding their little bicycles round and round and round 
and they were in a place some you know a few places ahead of us in the parade it was searing hot there were lots of floats that broke down that day so there was a lot of standing around and waiting and we were marching in pl so then you march in place you don't just stop you you're still marching you march and march and march but you're marching in place and the clowns were going round 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 and i'm sure they got were even hotter than us trudging along in their little clown outfits and all the makeup and riding in their little bicycles at any rate they decided to pull off the route and go um, a few blocks down to a bar and have a cold one. But when they went down the side street, everyone followed them. The bands, the floats, the local horse club, a queen of something or other, you know, waving. At some point, it dawned on everybody, there are no spectators down here, and you can't back up a parade. And I don't think we ever got back on track that day. I don't know what we did. It was a parade, totally gone wrong. When Jesus decided to ride into Jerusalem as a king, he satisfied the desires of lots of people for a good parade. The people had longed for such a thing. They longed for a parade to lift their spirits from the heavy burdens of their generations of servitude under foreign rulers and just the ordinary burdens of human existence. Here was the king they had been hoping for, the king who would lift them up and carry the nation to the future with justice and peace and victory over the Romans and the whole thing. And they shouted this century-old salute to a newly crowned king, Hosanna, God bless the king who comes in the name of the Lord. But this parade took a wrong turn. It took a turn many people didn't expect and could not understand. It took a turn from the shouts of Jesus' kingship to a last supper and a sign ringing, reading, King of the Jews above a dying man. Perhaps for some people, the loss of their own expectations of what Jesus would be helped them participate in the angry shouts that would come on that Good Friday, crucify him, crucify him. We understand the crowd. We have sometimes experienced disappointment and grief that accompanies a parade gone wrong in, for us. Many of you who ha have been disappointed by a leader, politician or a pastor or a beloved boss or an older relative, someone of whom you expected a great deal more. And everyone knows what it's like to invest a great deal of energy and hope and have it turn out badly. A marriage, a relationship with a child going down the wrong street, our own health heading off somewhere, our plans going awry, something we've taken for granted for a long time escapes us, something we've had that's cherished is taken from us our sanity, our self-worth, our career, our life. It can be impossible to back that parade up and get back on the right street. Who better then to have with us on a long and crazy journey than one who has been honored and then hated, who had everything turned upside down in such a short time? Who better to have with us in all the low places and the high places, the awful places and the funny places, the all too human places than Jesus. Who better to help us be more loving? Who better than the one who could use even a cross, a, a place of shameful suffering and transform it into a symbol of triumph? Who better to have with us than the one who can be with us and take as we take all the parades gone wrong and turn them into holy journeys of love and mercy who can lead us from death into Easter. So that if you should ever find yourself going down the wrong street, you will be all right in every sense. You will have the way back, even if you go through something 
very painful to get there. I used to have our teenagers in church act out a sort of um, tableau of the Passion reading on Good Friday. So we were rehearsing one day, and my nephew Justin was watching. He was just four years old. And when we finished, he told me that he thought we shouldn't leave Jesus dead. We should resurrect him. And so God does. But for now, we have Holy Week before us. We don't just hear the story. We participate in the parade that eventually goes wrong. The one we worship, who is like us in every way, commands us to be servants and then shows us what that means. We have our feet washed by him. We're forgiven by him for all our betrayals, large and small, and we dine with him. Then we'll watch on Good Friday at the foot of the cross. We'll weep with the women. We'll hang back with the disciples. We light a candle and we wait in the dark and we remember. Who better to have with us than this one? He walks with you in all your parades gone right and wrong. He suffers with you and finally, he raises you to new things, to new beginnings, to new life now and always. Amen. Friends in Christ, in this Lent season, we've heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and evil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called in baptism. We've studied together and shared the spiritual disciplines of Lent. Maundy Thursday is the beginning of the great three days when we reflect upon the meaning of the passion of the Christ. The name mandi comes from a Latin word, mandatum, that means command, as in a new command I give you, that you love one another. In the Christian tradition, it came to mean the washing of feet. On Maundy Thursday, Jesus was betrayed, and we remember this every time we take communion. That night, Jesus celebrated the Passover meal 
with his disciples the most important meal in Judaism. As we remember Maundy Thursday this morning, we first of all remember God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. Secondly, we remember our Lord Jesus Christ gives us the gift of his body and blood. Thirdly, we remember the mandatum, our Lord's commandment to love one another as he has loved us. And lastly, the church descends into darkness and silence as the sanctuary is emptied of the symbols of life and we meditate on the humiliation of our Lord with the words that were on his lips on the cross, Psalm 22. There is no benediction today and when the psalm is finished, the service is over and we leave in silence. Trusting in Jesus, who gave his life for the world, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, who marches triumphantly into Jerusalem and then kneels to wash our feet, gather your church around the world during this holy week. Humble the powerful, lift up the marginalized. Renew our faith and make us bold in service and love to our neighbors. Merciful God, God, who blesses the grain of the soil and the fruit of the vine, inspire in us a reverent care for the earth. Sustain fields, gardens, and wild places that all people are fed and every living thing flourishes. Merciful God, God, who was betrayed, comfort people everywhere who have suffered abuse at the hands of someone they knew and trusted. Heal the bodies, minds, and hearts of victims of exploitation. Help all who are suffering to know that you are near, especially today we remember Marilyn, Clint, Anne, Faith, Mark, Miranda, Don, Nona, Judy, Barb, and Dorothy. Merciful God, Receive these prayers, loving God, for the sake of the one who loved us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of Let's pray the offering prayer together. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places 
give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, gave it for them to eat, saying, This is my body, broken for you, do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Bread for the journey, a feast for hungry hearts, come.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May this sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted, they trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far away. O oh, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted, did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. Him, indeed, shall all sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Austerity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying, he has done it. 